We are back into our RPG series and uh, this is what we're going to build in this video. So uh, it's very basic, it's very not complicated at all and this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do some simple turning animations, simple walking animations, strafe animations and we have this jump mechanism which does not work at all. So we're gonna have to fix that as well. And also this camera doesn't work properly. Okay, so uh, how do we do all this? Well, in this video we are going to do very little programming and we are going to focus on this animator. This is basically the simplest animation tree you're going to ever see and it contains one blend tree and this loop animation. So we have a jump, falling, land and back to our blend tree. So. Uh, We'll be doing everything from scratch in this video, of course, don't be scared of that. And uh, into our controller, what I've added is a very simple turn amount. And I've added something else called a on GUI sphere, which we're going to take a look in just one moment. So the reason why I did this is because I wanted to visualize where my collision sphere would be placed. So, so this is the ground distance right here. And this is the ground clearance. So this is how big we want our collision box to be. And all this turn amount does is basically it controls the turn amount speed. So if we do like 600, this is going to turn very, very quickly. As we can see, we can just leave it to 90. And now we'll have a very slow turning. So let's see how we can make this. Okay, so this is the script where we left off in the last video. So uh, there is nothing special in here. So uh, in between episodes, I've added that simple sphere. And the way it works is by using something called Ondraw Gizmos. So Ondraw Gizmos is basically a editor thing or a editor function. And uh, this is how you use it. So you basically say on draw gizmos and this on draw gizmos will draw the gizmos regardless of our object being selected so we don't want that we want to draw gizmos only when the object is selected so we just put in selected in here okay now we have a gizmos that draws whatever we tell it to draw so we obviously just want that sphere to draw and to do that we're going to say gizmos dot draw sphere so you can see you can draw whatever you want and we're going to do a sphere for now. So a sphere takes in a vector 3 center and a radius, which is exactly what we have up here. So for the vector 3 center, what we're going to pass is basically the same vector that we pass in here, except that instead of character controller dot height, we are going to give it a brand new ground distance float variable. So we're going to pass in distance in here and we are going to make it from zero all the way over to one. So now instead of doing height slash two, we want to do minus ground distance. Okay, and as we can see, it takes in another parameter, which is the radius. And for the radius, we already have a ground clearance. So we're gonna pass that in here. And where we check for is grounded, we want to pass the ground clears in here as well. So just pass in here ground distance. Okay, so basically this line and this other line should be exactly the same. These two right here. So now if we go ahead in our scene and we select our troop or our game object, we should see a very small sphere that has appeared in here. So this will only appear if this object is selected, as we can see. And uh, we can play around with the values, uh, obviously. And that is totally optional. You don't have to do that. The main focus of this video is obviously this animator tree. And uh, I've already created a animation controller. So what I'll do is I'll create a brand new one just for the purpose of this video. So go into your desired folder. I'll just do it in this character in here. Just hit create and we are going to select a animator controller. So you can call it whatever you want. I'll just call it controller for 
animation and uh, this is your controller so the way you use this animator is by selecting a controller and this will show your controller so for now we just want to select our new controller and this is everything we have we have any state entry and exit so we don't care about exit and we also don't care about any state for now we're obviously going to use these later on but for now we just want this entry node so what do we want to do in here well before we go ahead and play with these values we want to pass this controller into our animator so where we left off in the last episode is that we didn't have a animator so just go ahead and add a component called animator this is your brand new animator drag your animation drop it into the controller and now you have a controller this will work without a avatar but i went ahead and created a avatar okay now let's see how we can make a animation work for this particular character so if we hit play for now this player will do nothing and stand in that t pose as we can see in here we can move around and it is still in the t pose so the way we add in a animation into a character is by going into animator right click and this is our node options so straight ahead we want to create a blend tree so blend tree is basically a locomotion controller so that's exactly what we want to do right now so we want to go ahead and right click create state and here is where we see our new blend tree so we're gonna call it movement locomotion okay so now we have a blend tree so the way we're going to manipulate with a blend tree is by double clicking this movement locomotion blend tree and here is our blend tree so it's a empty blend tree for now obviously we have nothing going on in here and before we go ahead and put in some values First of all, we're going to go into parameters. We're going to name this blend into vertical. And we want to add in a new float called horizontal. You absolutely don't have to call them vertical and horizontal. You can just add in forward in here maybe. Or you can add in, I don't know, throttle input. Whatever you want. I'll just name it vertical. Okay, so now we have two variables in here. We have a vertical and we have a horizontal. So now the way we're going to manipulate with the blend tree is by first changing the blend type into 2D directional. So now we can immediately see that we have two variables in here and the second one is not correct. So we're going to go ahead and change this blend into horizontal. So now we have a vertical and we have a horizontal. Next, we want to add in some motion. So we're going to click this plus add motion field. Now we have one motion field. And what do we want to do in this motion field? Well, well, for the first parameter that we want to give is this idle. So we're going to go ahead and drag this mix ammo.com and drop it into our motion. So this motion will trigger when no keys are pressed, which means this is zero and this is zero. Now we want a movement that gets triggered when this vertical hits one. So we're going to add in a new motion field and we're going to call this position Y1. So as we can see, it added a new motion blend in here. So all we want to do now is drag our walking and drop it inside this motion. Okay, so now we got our first locomotion blend tree. Okay, so... Uh, now, if we try to move our vertical, we're going to see that nothing is happening and the compiler is yelling at us because this is not the right blend type to use for these animations. So we're going to go ahead and change the blend type into freeform directional. So now if we hit this play button in here, we're going to see we have no model available. So we're going to drop in our model right here and we are going to see our animations working. So if we bring our vertical back to zero, we're going to see that he is idling. And if we go back to one, he is walking. Okay, so now we have successfully created a walking blend tree. Now you might have guessed what we're going to do next. Next, we are going to add in right strafing and left strafing or whatever the term is called. So we're going to hit this plus new motion 
So now if the horizontal is minus one, we are going to be triggering this animation in here. So the animation that I just dropped in is called left strafe walking. So just drag it and drop it inside of this blend tree. And now if we play around with the values, if we move forward, we're going to see that he is very slightly strafing, which I think is a very natural look. Okay, so now let's add in one more animation. And this one is going to be for the left one. I mean the right one. So we have left straight left strafe walking and now we're going to pass in right strafe walking. So now it is going to work perfectly fine. Okay, so now we have successfully created a very very simple blend tree. The next thing that we're going to do is to actually control it. So to do that, we're going to go over to our controller and we are going to import some values. So up here, we're going to do another hide in inspector public and this time we are going to call a animator and just like we do in any component we are going to have to get that component into the start method so animator is equal to get component animator and that is how simple it is to import a animator after importing it we are going to use it so into our movement function let's do some animation trickery so what do we want to do well for now we want to just change the vertical and the horizontal axes so to do that we are going to tell animator dot set float and here is how the float works so we pass in the string name and we pass in the value so for the string name we want vertical and we obviously want it to be equal to input dot vertical okay now let's do the same thing for the horizontal so set float horizontal input manager dot horizontal now that we have a animator attached to our game object and we have our animations working for now we have only one locomotion we just want to hit play and we want our character to be actually moving and as we can see it is already idling which is good which is a good thing so now let's try walking and we can see he is actually walking okay so that is success until now so what do we want to do now okay now let's try and add in a jumping mechanism so i've already went ahead and downloaded some jumping animations and this is what i got i have falling idle which i'll just drag and drop into here don't forget to rename your things because later on it's very easy to get confused with we want our jumping up and we want a landing animations so this is how this is going to work so we want to create a transition from here so make transition into jump we also want to make a transition that goes from the blend tree over to falling because we can fall without jumping maybe we just ran off a cliff or something so also we want to make a transition if we jump we want to go over to idle so we want to make a transition to there and from falling idle we can't go back straight into our locomotion so we want to land first and after landing we can go back into our locomotion so now we just need one more value and the value we're going to pass right now is a boolean and the boolean we are going to call grounded and the grounded will most of the time be true so if the grounded here is our conditions if the grounded right here becomes false we want to go straight into falling however if we want to jump and for that we want to pass in a float variable so if we want to add a condition in here if jumping is greater than zero that means it's one we want to go into jumping and from jumping we want to go without any condition over to falling and from falling we want to go over to landing without any condition and from landing we'll go back into the locomotion in theory this should all be working fine so all we have to do is go back into our controller and add in these variables that we just did so back into our animator what we want to do is say animator dot set boolean the boolean that we did was called grounded and we want to pass in as grounded this is grounded is basically checking if we're grounded or not which we made a function for that in a previous video 
And one last thing that we want to add is a animator set float. The float is called jump and the jump will be equal to input manager dot jump. Okay, now we're done with our controller. We just want to hit save, go back into our game and uh, we should have a jumping mechanism that is working. So let's hit play and let's see if it actually works. Okay, so if we try and jump, we're going to see that nothing is happening. And that is because this animation has a exit time. So what an exit time means is that after this is done and this condition is true, then we can go into jumping. So we're just simply going to turn that off. And now if we jump, we're going to see that our animation works perfectly fine. So we want to uncheck the has exit time in this one as well. So now if we walk off, we should see our animations working. And that is how simple it is to make a jumping function. So obviously you just want to make these a little bit like this one. Okay, it is up to you how you configure this jumping function. So uh, if you're having some problems with these animations, the problem will be that these animations, for example, this walking animation will come to you like this. So if we hit play, we're going to see that our character is actually moving from this position. So after you hit play, you will be getting this kind of error like this one right here, for example. So if we try and walk forward, we're going to see that he is walking outside his area. And that is obviously giving us a error in here. So there is a very, very nice and quick, simple fix for that. And it is this loop pose. So we're going to see that loop pose in action down here. We can just check it and he walks in place. We can uncheck it and he walks off his place. So we want to just check those animations. Go ahead and hit play. And now this is what you get. You get a nice smooth animation. So that's all I have prepared for this video. It's nice and simple. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. And we are going to keep on working in this RPG game in the next videos. So thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next videos.